for admit. We are pleased to have you, ladies and gentlemen, in this uh, month of October webinar. And uh, bear with us. We try to get small participants. We have 11 persons. However, uh, welcome to our free webinar with the topic on um, cyber resilience, safeguarding in a digital frontier. Uh, if you have any queries, you have any uh, requests for trainings, just check the chat box. You can contact training at im-africa.org. For membership, go to membership at im.africa.org. So um, in this training, please we will accept questions on the on the chat box. We will not accept audio questions. You will use the the chat to send in your questions. And please ensure your mics are always muted. So that will not distract the the course. Okay, so thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I just want to confirm um is the present here. I guess it's here. Um yeah. So um so please can we can we start? Please we can proceed. Yeah. Hello. We can proceed. Others will join us as we make okay, progress. Good. All right, so um, good evening once again, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome to the IM, this is Information Management for Africa, the premier institute for information management, privacy and data protection, and security. You, we have a topic today that talks about cyber wrestling. And before we start, I would like to call upon our president to give his opening remark before we comments. Thank you very much, Mr. President, over to you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Lago. Uh, a very good evening, distinguished members and uh, guests joining us for the October 2023 uh, webinar. It's indeed a great pleasure to be here once again. And um, I want to say a very big thank you to our resource person uh, for accepting to present uh, today's uh, paper. Uh, without taking too much of our time, as we usually have a uh, um, outline of programs. Um, I want to hand over back to Mr. Nagbo to commence from here. I will wait for others to join us. Thank you once again, as I wish us all a wonderful session. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. President, for opening this session. Okay, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, um, for today's topic. Uh, we have our able fellow member. Uh, in person of uh, Mr. Idris Musa, and is a fellow of this information management. And uh, permit me to indulge you with his profile. Mr. Idris Musa, who is the general manager, information technology and asset integrity, works for Owando PLC. Um, he's a vision driven organizational change leader. Is in technology, asset, and information security, with overall responsibility for information technology, right? Operations technology and the integrity of all operations and assets, both corporate and field. He joined the, his organization, Owando PLC, in 2007 and has held various management positions, including the service delivery manager as well as the group head, information technology. With almost two decades of experience and a career-long record of technology portfolio, project management, sources, organizational change management, and business process engineering and improvements. Mr. Musa has a proven track record of orchestrating innovative solutions and implementing digital strategies that have transformed key operations within the company. Seen Owando become the first oil and gas company in Africa to fully embrace cloud ERP and ISO 2701 certified, among others. He is a fellow of both the Institute of Information Management and the British Computer Society. Mr. Musa is a result focused thought leader with expertise spanning management of IT and project portfolios, enterprise architecture, 
enterprise risk management, and end-to-end -end service delivery. He is an exceptionally dedicated professional with keen interpersonal communication and organizational skills, as well as policy formulation and resource allocation expertise for diverse business needs. He's also a senior member of the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, SMIE US, and Chartered IT Professional, CITP, a champion of various social causes such as poverty alleviation, education relief for, and care for the indigent. Is a member of the Board of Trustee of the Aggregate Platform and Emergency Food Relief NGO. Ladies and gentlemen, permit me to welcome Mr. Idris Musa, our able speaker for today's webinar. Thank you very much. Over to you, Mr. Musa, please. If you, I know you have been here since, you're welcome. Mr. Idris Thank Musa, you. please. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Nago, and um, good evening. Um, everyone, I hope you're well. Um, Mr. Nago, can you confirm that you can hear me clearly? Yes, uh, we can hear you, Mr. Idris. We can hear you, but oh. I think your screen is not yet up. Yes, it's it's going to come up shortly. It's fantastic. Um, I am going to share my screen. I hope I have um, the right to share. I'm unable to, okay, fantastic. Can you confirm that you can see my screen? Yes, sir. Yeah, we can see your screen. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Um, ah, no. Okay. It's okay. All right. Fant fantastic. So um, le let me um, also recognize and um, pay due homage to our very focused and driven and some will say indefatigable president for for really making sure that this institute has a say and is involved not only in this continent but globally and also um, appreciate my dear brother mr nago who is also a thought leader in this space um, i'm glad to be here <laughs> Um, and I'm glad to be delivering this um, topic, which is really about cyber resilience, safeguarding in the frontier that is now defining what we refer to as digital or the new world. Um, some things for us to think about. I would love to start with a couple of questions. Um, if anyone is able to tell us and just put in the chat what they understand resilience to mean, um, just an English word, what is resilience? Um, so that some of those comments would allow all of us ponder over uh, why resilience is required and what the concept of safeguarding is in, in this era. Uh, so, I'll be talking about this, uh, and um, in the, over the next few minutes, I'll be sharing a couple of nuggets, um, the way I see it. Um, in the form of synopsis, a lot of us are really familiar with the need to navigate the current evolving world. Now, you see, the whole cyber world is really a concept that everyone should be familiar with. Our physical world is made up of the buildings, our infrastructure, roads. Um, uh, we've got neighbors, we have markets, hospitals. But the cyber world is, is really a, a, a replica, if, if, I, if I may say, of the physical world. 
the, the fact that you've got some sort of connectivity and you have business to do online, which could be your entertainment or social, to your education, or to even e-commerce. You have a website where you buy stock or even banking. You are operating in that cyber world. And that's really the playground for a modern worker. So um, as a common synopsis, this is a world where we need to have what I call cyber sense. We used to call it street sense or being street smart. So you need to have ways to really fortify yourself. Is it your identity you want to protect? Is it your, your valuables you want to protect? You need to find ways to really strengthen yourself and you must understand the entire ecosystem. What is the cyber world? What does it mean to me? What does it mean to you? What does it mean to the world? You, you need to understand that because it means different things to different countries as we are seeing. And I'll talk a bit more about that as I progress. And your data is also key. Um, data is, is, is anything actually that defines you or what you do or what you need to access, right? And data proliferation in this era is something that I don't think the world foresaw, but it's something that is a gift and also a curse. Then there are some guiding principles that I will touch on as well and what it means to really have the people angle to be resilient. Uh, as I move on to the next slide to welcome us to what I call the digital frontier, resilience really is about how we adapt to change, how we bounce back from an adverse condition or situation, right? Or how we really bounce back from challenges or stress. And, you know, stress could be physical, it could be mental, it could be emotional or psychological. If you if you hear people say that guy has got the grit, the mental grit or physical grit, people that go to gym, work on their physique and also their mental toughness, they are trying to become resilient. This is also what we must try and do in, in the cyber world. The digital frontier is really nothing, that, nothing, nothing but how connected we are now are. The picture here is trying to show a world that is really super connected, right? We've never seen the world this connected. Um, is it 5G or the fact that you are having more transatlantic fiber cables uh, uh, um, um, all over the world? We have connections that are now machine and human or human and human or machine and machine. You are seeing the advent of Internet of Things, and a lot of companies are beginning to embrace this to change the way they operate. They are in the oil and gas space, deep water facilities that are dangerous to really operate. There are robots that can now do that, and they send to you feeds of data, video, audio, just data, uh, machine type, language type data. Um, to the world has never been more connected. That is your digital frontier. Uh, it goes beyond how humans interact with humans. It goes beyond how humans interact with machines. It's transforming the entire frontier. Medical engineering or biomedical engineering is a fusion of uh, information technology and biotechnology. You're seeing a lot of transformation in those spaces. Some people have implants, pacers in their heart that sort of help them manage any ailments. Some have um, um, chips implanted in them that's helping them manage their blood sugar level. In fact, you hear people talk about what they call a transhuman. It's a human being that's either using a, three, a 4D printed um, kidney or has a chip in there that's helping them keep fit. That is your digital frontier. It's interesting, but it also has a lot of um, risks. And some of the questions you need to ask 
yourselves. We all need to ask ourselves in this era is how do we fortify our defenses? What is defenses in this era? Are you going to look at the traditional, oh, I have a firewall, I have an antivirus? What does defense mean? What does it mean to be safe in this new frontier? How do you also navigate the complexity? The other day someone was telling me about all of these are online banks, the OP, and how they fell victim of some sort of social engineering, and they couldn't really get the bank to trace the movement of the money they have lost. Is that because there is no data? Or is it because there's too much of data? How do you also navigate complexity in your space? And how do you also ensure security? security of information, security of assets. Again, I look at this cyber physical world as a fusion. It's now merged. I am unable to even see the world are just physical anymore. The other day, I think recently, sometime last year, we all must have read about the fact that a drone was used to bomb a part of an oil and gas company in Asia. Um, and that's to tell you how sophisticated the cyber space has become. If, the, if, the, if there's a World War III, like someone predicted, it will so damage this world that will go back to Stone Age because of how sophisticated the world that I'm, I'm going to be calling cyber physical is now. So how do you ensure security of valuables, information, assets, yourself? It's all really some of the questions we need to ask in this frontier? How do you also ensure that you maintain the sanity and sanctity of the family front? A lot of children in this era are what they call the digital natives, right? They are born into the era of using of um, um, computer devices. Uh, so how do you ensure that as they engage online, they are doing it in a safe manner, they need it in an ethical manner. Um, they are also, um, sorry, they are doing it in a safe manner, they need it in an ethical manner, and they are not exposed to the risk associated with um, with the a lot of things that we see online right now that are AI driven. How do you ensure they form the right behavior? So there's a huge fusion between the physical and the cyber. As I progress, I will touch a bit around all of these things. Uh, to understand this new frontier, it's not really new, but it's something that we all need to spend time to understand. It's a space that is changing drastically. Technology is evolving at a pace that the world has not seen. You are seeing uh, miniaturization, powerful machines we call mobile phones or smartphones. Apple is going to release the Vision Pro by December that just bring your entire cinema into your room. So you need to understand this landscape that we're calling the cyber physical or cyberspace. And what is really driving this, this transformation? Uh, key amongst those drivers are your global connectivity, as I earlier mentioned. You're seeing unprecedented connectivity infrastructure across the world. And Africa is really positioned because we don't have the burden of having old infrastructure. A couple of years back, Elon Musk showed us that you cannot have internet penetration 100% if you, if you want by deploying the, the, his internet solution um, across the globe. Nigeria that used to be covered about 40% can now boast of having 100%, although there's still accessibility or affordability concerns, but the world is more connected than ever. You have fridges, smart devices across your fridge. They, uh, they, they connect it to your e-commerce. They can help you pre uh, uh, subscribe to either your medicine or your grocery. The world has never been more connected. And that connectedness is so complex. It's so complex uh, uh, um, today that one could argue that um, if you're not really cyber smart, you might spend more you might be exposed more. You might buy fake products. There's a whole lot of connected. There's a whole lot of uncertainty and also value because a lot of businesses are now online. They were born online. 
Some are even live their entire life online. You have online education. So it's so complex to understand, actually. And, and it's why today the world may still be struggling with having a global policy that is unique and uniform across how data is managed, privacy is managed, um, the entirety of online use, ethical use of all of these um, um, cyber transformative technologies, right? Um, that's what the world is struggling with. And then you have transformations. Thankfully, COVID made the entire world realize that they need to be online being online is not an option anymore. And the ease with which you can be present actively online is enabled by, by cloud. Is it your cloud infrastructure or cloud softwares or what a lot of on the consumer side called mobile apps? All of these things have, have changed the way we live, changed the way we interact, changed the way we we. We um, um, consume knowledge. The other day, someone was telling me that um, ever since our fuel price just increased, what he's found is he's able to order his seaway one bottle, two bottle. There's an app for that, and I find that to be fascinating because one would have thought seaway having an app uh, in this era, the market might not be there, but there's an app for almost everything. There's even an app that talks about how you get artisans. So this is really what is the new frontier for what they call agility or efficiency. So to understand your frontier, those are the concepts that um, play a role. And having established what that frontier is, the connectivity, and the connectedness, cloud, we then need to understand what the importance of cyber resilience is. Remember I said cyber resilience is really your ability to withstand any uncertainty um, within the cyberspace, right? And, and um, I've gone ahead to sort of project it to be similar to what resilience is. Now, again, it's about well-being, simply put. It's also important that you maintain your cyber well-being. And it matters because there are threats out there. There are threats, there are very, very genuine, real cyber threats out there. And they are also evolving, they're becoming more sophisticated. The defenses of yesterday will not protect you today. The knowledge of yesterday is not enough for you to stay secure uh, 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 today in this cyberspace. Um, and that's why there's a need for uh, adaptive defenses, right? One that understands that the landscape called cyber is changing. There are new type of threats. The threat actors are getting more sophisticated. And as such, you don't you must not stay rigid. It is not about having oh firewall network security. No, you need to also sort of move with the tide, understand the the tide and respond in a manner that shows that you are resilient. And another thing this era is showing us is you can't do it all by yourself. You have to collaborate to to gain knowledge, to share knowledge, to cross-pollinate learnings, and also to rely on the different expert base that exists in ensuring that um, businesses or individuals stay, stay ahead of these threats um, in this modern era. And the landscape is one that is filled with different types of threats. Is it the malware, which is something that uh, keeps evolving? A malware is just a malicious software, right? A software designed, built by intelligent people to just do bad things. That's what the malware is. It's been here forever, but it has just not gone away. The threat actors still find a way to make it more sophisticated. Is it phishing attacks that just rely on how gullible humans are to deceive them? And, and uh, interestingly, um, the number of people that are falling for, for some phishing attacks 
are people that are industry experts. So uh, no one is actually protected. It's why we need to be a bit more paranoid and remind ourselves of data breaches. There's a lot of uh, 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 data breaches across the globe that um, we, the world is almost beginning to accept that it's now the norm. Um, but again, this is the landscape. And a lot of deceits out there, uh, uh, and this image is more than trying to tell you, look, it looks can be deceptive. Not everything that glitter online is gold. Anything that has a sense of urgency, let's do this, you gain this. Think twice. The human nature is one that is gullible. It's why you need knowledge to make you a bit more, a bit more decisive and less impulsive. But the landscape is filled with dangers. And these are some of the dangers. The first step really in understanding this landscape is recognizing that all these dangers exist. That's the first step in actually surviving in the landscape. This is no longer uh, it's IT's problem. No, this is all our problem. We've had cases of stolen identities online. People use your name to do all sorts um, online. So you need to understand the landscape. You cannot master what you don't understand. You cannot try to withstand what you don't understand is the point of this slide. Now to build cyber resilience, um, I wanted to give us a sneak preview of what is resilience in the organizational con con context. You will see that of the seven boxes or seven circles here, there's only one that speaks to or two that speaks to technology, IT and cybersecurity. The rest is really looking at relationship, uh, it is your supply base, your stakeholders, your leadership, leadership um, buy-in, leadership um, acceptance of this responsibility, your workforce, your people. But there are a lot of components that are dependencies if you must build really and truly original resilience. And that's what this slide is highlighting. Because again, how resilient organization is how ready they are to understand these risks or any risk, respond and not react. You know, responding is it's happened. Re re reacting is it's happened. Responding is you are anticipating that it may happen and you are putting measures in place, be it um, policies, procedures, investments in technology, having experts come look at what you're doing, more or less assessing your, your journey, how mature you are, things like that. Generally, this also is applicable to cyber resilience. So it, it requires a whole wide initiative that has to be owned by the owners of the business, be it um, if the board for businesses that are well established or as a, a founder of an SME, you need to understand that it is no longer an option to design security into how you do business. Because in this era, you are really not going to be able to do business end-to-end -end without interacting with this cyber world. And some of the reasons why businesses should make this investment is really around the continuity of their business. Without this strategy, they will be disrupted. I, I, imagine a simple business that is online, an e-commerce business is unable to sell because someone somewhere has pushed too many requests to this website, making it impossible for the website to be active. So if you are trying to go online, maybe book your travel, buy tickets, or buy anything, you're unable to because the owner of this business has not invested in the right denial of service prevention uh, solution. And if you don't have a way to recover, then your operations will be impacted. This is not the area where you say, I might be attacked. This is the area of what do I do when 
I am attacked. No business is shielded from being a victim of cyber threats. It's why you must have an effective recovery strategy uh, 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 in place. And if you don't have all of this, and if you have all of this, but do not have the people that would help you implement this or activate these plans, then again, uh, you've invested in one dimension. It's not complete. So businesses need to ensure they make the right investment so they can continue to exist, continue to operate, and also continue to comply because the world is changing. And there are a lot of data privacy, data protection laws, uh, compliance laws, even the new buzz for some of us in this, uh, in, 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 the, in, in the business world, the new buzz that is called the ESG, Environment, Social and Governance, the new buzz around the world. Is 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 it is changing the way business is done. Some years back, when you're looking for people to fund your business, they only look at your business value. But now they are trying to prevent things like modern day slavery. They try to hold you accountable to your governance uh, 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 maturity. They are trying to also ensure that you are environmentally uh, responsible. So your business is not only impacting the environment positively, but it is doing so deliberately. Um, some years back, nobody cared about these things. So it is important, and these are some of the reasons why um, businesses must then um, look at things differently and um, invest in, in this cyber grit or cyber resilience. And it's a process. It's not as if you're going to go to be market and buy cyber resilience. No, it is something, it's a journey. So you need to actually take the journey and you will grow uh, 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 on that path. So today you might be at a basic level um, and then as you continue to practice, um, you get to a state where you, you now attain mastery and you continue to just sort of improve that level. So it's, it's actually a journey and you cannot really benefit if if you don't start the journey uh it involves a lot of preparedness and you need to continue to monitor and measure where you are at because remember the threat landscape is ever changing and you need partnerships this is the era where partnership is actually the way to win collaboration is the way to win in this era and the first point is really preparedness and some of the key steps really is to have a plan that try to predict tomorrow and also work towards eliminating or uh, at, the, at, at best reducing the risk you face tomorrow. You see, on the individual front, I see a lot of people um, take for granted the need to put this two factor on their WhatsApp. But interestingly, almost every day, People fall victim of the fact that their WhatsApp has been hijacked. Something that, something that simple requires that you have the, it's not lack of knowledge, it's just committing, it's not understanding the risk uh, 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 enough on the individual front, right? Something that simple. Again, um, preparedness and planning is key. We need to be able to anticipate some of the threats that can affect our businesses, that can shape the behavior of our children, trust me, there are a lot of AI, AI games out there that, interestingly, I, I had to be involved in one where uh, a friend was calling my attention to the fact that there is this character AI that is telling his children, oh, don't worry about, about um, your parents, you know, no human beings die, I have a program, I will always be with you. So it is modeling the mindset of the child to trust and rely. And the children are already sort of um, glued or addicted to it. He was asking me for uh, preventive measures. Uh, and I'm like, oh, no, you just need to cut their screen time. You need to, you need to be an involved parent. This is not the area where you leave a child with a laptop. You need to have filters. So again, certain... certain um, 
um, tactics that can also help you on the home front. It's very, very important. So you need to plan these things. You need to also assess the threats. This is not the area where you leave it on your laptop. It's also not the area where a business just assumes that buying a firewall, doing some vulnerability assessment, uh, having a security team is enough for you to stay ahead of the very sophisticated risk or threats. No. So you need to actually do some deep assessment and have plans, have playbooks. If I am attacked this way, what do we do? How do I isolate? How do I continue to operate? You must have playbooks um, um, in place. These are some of the steps that will make a business cyber resilient. It will put you on the path towards becoming a resilient business. I am mixing this from a business standpoint down to the, the home front, so it sort of becomes more relatable. Cyber resilience is not a business concept only, although the impact is dire in the business, but on our home front, there's still certain policies, practices you can embrace to not be victims. And it has to be a deliberate endeavor. The next is really continuously, continuously monitoring, monitoring that cyberspace, um, the threats out there. Um, when you monitor, you are able to understand patterns. You are able to also um, see trends that are applicable to you. Which risk are you uh, is, is applicable to your business, uh, uh, and that gives you a lot of insights to then. Change your security measures. Remember, this is not the era where you 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 just it's only an antivirus on your laptop, or as a business you invest in what they call defense in depth. Your layer seven, at your physical layer, your access control, at the data link layer, you have a certain segmentation. Oh no, this is the era where you continuously monitor, and you are able to sort of just change gear and that's what agility is about right uh, it has to be adaptive because the threat actors are becoming more sophisticated imagine chat gpt one of the generative um, ai basically you can you can accept prompts and give you response right is now being used by those people that send all of these social engineering emails to rest proper emails that is making it difficult for a lot of our intelligence systems or defenses to detect. So you need to know that this exists and you need to try and understand how to elevate the awareness of your users if you're in the company, even the family front, um, that look, certain emails uh, are, are now well written, they may appear genuine, do not fall for them. In fact, what I normally tell um, some of my my base, my people where I work is, if anything has a sense of urgency to it, just pause, pause, pause. This is the area where supply chain risk. You may not be attacked, you may not have been compromised, but your vendor would have been compromised. Again, we've dealt with instances where a vendor's email system was compromised. And that vendor's system was, was scanned by this actor and they saw that company A is owing this vendor some money. Even the vendor didn't know. The attackers now wrote company A, please pay us your money. If you don't pay us now, we're going to sue you or something. And they now sent a valid email to company A asking the company to pay the money into another account. And the company, because their own process, is, their own process is tied around receiving email from this vendor. So this third party risk to exist. So as you fortify yourself, you need to also extend the awareness to your critical vendors, critical partners. If all of us see a link from the president today saying um, uh, you have early bed discount of 90 percent on your, uh, your 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 annual fee we will most likely click on it 
without, without necessarily checking that link. Because all of us, all humans love our wolf, right? But this is the error where we are saying, pause before you click on it. It could actually be the, that his WhatsApp has been compromised and they have seen an easy way to get all of us to click on that link and, and, and we'll all be impacted. Or we see an interesting sensational um, um, message that says uh, Dubai has lifted the visa or Tinubu is, is going to give in scholarship. Some very sensational things that play on our gullible nature. We most likely will click on it. Or we see, oh, and uh, Naramali has been caught. We all most likely will click on it. But as professionals, as practitioners, it's not our duty to educate the world that look, these threat actors have a way of knowing what is trending and can use them to also attempt to compromise our devices, compromise our businesses, steal data, leading to even financial loss. So agility is key. The ease with which you are able to just shift gear, change gear, is what I call agility. You are able to just, you're not rigid, you're not fixed. You are able to just respond. You're able to change gear, you're able to get something that protects your business, your family. That ease in your response is also very, very key. You can't gain that unless you have the right policies, right investment, right partnership, right collaboration. So because the threat is evolving, our defenses should also um, evolve and continuous monitoring and also shifting gears as the case uh, may be is required in this era. Then I, then I, I can't really overemphasize collaboration and training. You know, a lot of businesses tend to think when I've bought the Palo Alto firewall or the 40 gate firewall, and my guys, my team are smart enough, the IT team are smart enough, they don't see the need to continuously train even the experts. And you as an expert don't need to continue to train yourself. But um, staying ahead of this threat requires that you not only share knowledge, share awareness, join forums, join institute, participate in trainings, just commit to a lifelong learning. You need to also understand what the business is doing. So if I'm in, I'm in oil and gas or financial sector or manufacturing, the risks that we all face are common, but how the business perceives the risk is important. So you need to understand how that business operates. You need to understand what is risk to that business. You need to also collaborate with the different departments, unit functions in that business to be able to sell this concept of the metaverse or the cyber space or the fact that there's a conversion between the cyber and the physical and these risks exist. Different businesses are on different maturity states. The banks have CBN building that they're next to they, they sort of invest hugely in technology. Um, but there are some other unregulated sectors in, in, in the country, even globally, that may not see such investment, right? So you require that collaboration, skill development. No knowledge in this era is a waste. From knowledge about data, about the new tools, about um, the new techniques, about the policy changes globally, uh, and the different privacy laws or standards, it's important for all of us to get involved. Uh, and team empowerment is not one that I can, I can overemphasize. That's one of the essential components for becoming or building a cyber resilient workforce, or cyber resilient shield that protects both uh, businesses and individuals. Um, there are some global implications uh, of cyber resilience. You know, as Elliot mentioned, this is the era where ESG, is now playing a role in sustainability. So you have uh, what they call climate financing. So people who will give you money, who will give your business money because they believe 
you have decided to run a responsible business or run a business responsibly. And um, being responsible requires that you have measures in place to stay secure, to make the world a better place. It is now a thing because the world is very, very interconnected. And it's a way of them also securing their, their future, right? If as a partner, you are attacked or you are exposed, they are also exposed. The world is connected, right? So international cooperation is focused around some of these governance tactics. So the, for those who follow this COP, conference of parties where different countries go to and commit to net zero, more or less saying they will stop releasing carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide to the atmosphere. It's really around come and invest in my country, come and create jobs, come and support my businesses. I would, by 2050, by 2060, reduce my emission. A lot of them are looking at how cyber resilient you are, how you are tackling this agenda uh, around cyber, cy- cyber security. Are you on the... You actually... Are you on that debate? Uh, can... can can you mute, please? I'm hearing some interference. So uh, the, the last segment of my talk would really be to talk about this server resilience and, and let people see it in, in action. And there are some findings. Uh, I've decided to not reveal the organization in question. Um, you know, the first point, organizations cannot predict what the next large attack will be. Nobody knows tomorrow. However, what you now find organizations doing is they waste energy preparing to counter the most recent high profile attack. So, for example, if you hear that there is a virus or a ransomware called WannaCry, it is encrypting your file, preventing you from accessing your file and asking for money. The next thing you know is all other companies begin to try and invest in something that prevents WannaCry. But that's a very reactive approach. A lot of companies do this. You find that you have policies. You don't change your policy until you've heard, oh, there are some state actors in Niger that have come to attacking telecom infrastructure in Nigeria. Then you begin to go and try to invest in, in defense, denial of service, or something like that. That is a very outdated approach. But some companies still do it. Uh, the second point is, Organizations tend to discuss drastic security changes only in the heat of a recent newsworthy or targeted attack. If we all hear tomorrow that InterSwitch has been breached, you'll find a lot of companies, a lot of practitioners, managers, specialists, experts beginning to talk about, oh, how are they attacked? What do we need to, what do we need to learn? I'm not saying that's a bad practice, but I'm saying these are practices that are very, very narrow or tunnel in a modern approach to cybersecurity. We must move away from being purely reactive. So a lot of companies still do this. Uh, You might find yourself in an organization that is still doing this. These are actually anti-resilient practices. None of the recommendations you need to prepare for both today and tomorrow. You need to prepare for the future. Yes, today is happening. What else can happen tomorrow? This is the era of artificial intelligence, robotics. As they are getting sophisticated, so so are the threat actors. As your business moves deeper online, so so will you be exposed to a lot of the threats out there. So I'm saying prepare for the future. You need to have security program that is tied to business value. What do I mean? Your business must be, the, the word is a culture. You must try and drive your business to a high awareness level so that they see the value in becoming cyber resilient and they also see the risk clearly. Oh, Oga, you know if you are breached, now, Mr. CEO, if you are breached now, you not only lose consumer, customer confidence, you also pay a fine. So when you begin to have these conversations at different levels to heighten their awareness, 
based on this exposure, you are on your path to becoming more cyber resilient. And you must have a crisis communications mechanism or procedure or playbook. There are different cyber attacks that can happen. It could be to one person, with the entire organization, it could be impersonation. There could be a lot of DDT. The landscape is vast. You must have different playbook and you must test these playbooks, right? When it happens, which of the playbook are you going to activate? When it is a normal attack that is, is, is spreading lies about your CEO, maybe saying your CEO is caught in a very um, uh, um, revealing or, 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 or ex- very, very uh, exposing his personality, what do you do? How do you manage the, the perception? How do you manage that wrong impression? Because again, this is the era of deep fake, right? Somebody can actually fake my voice to uh, and put out there that I am anti, anti, anti government. Similar to what happened, I think a couple of days back, where um, some some influencer was jailed. I think that's the first time an influencer is being jailed for expressing views on TikTok. Now, the jury is out there. It may actually be, be genuine or it may not, but I hear that it's been established that the, the, the lady actually um, said things that were demeaning to the president. So basically, you need to have ways of responding when these things um, happen. And there are some recommendations. Another approach is to look at cyber resilience across. Um, four time horizons, four timelines. One is continuous and that's when you're prepared. That's the first box. How do you manage your crisis? How do you respond that will be in weeks? You must have playbooks that speaks to how you respond, how you communicate in case you are compromised. The third is you have to, you have to be adaptive and that will take months. It really is around, is around having programs. You know, a program is a combination of different activities and tactics and projects to manage your risk, to create awareness, to heighten the awareness quotient of your organization or even your home front. I'm also emphasizing the home front because sometimes you find people focusing on the company and not knowing that their home front is also part of this connected world or digital frontier and then manage this is something that you have to do continuously. Your governance, the transformation, you just need to be adaptable. Um, and this will help you manage things you cannot predict, things that are existing that you've heard happened, some are even emerging. Emerging could be in the user behavior, in the easy teach. You can even buy some of these um, um, threats on the dark web. It could be anything. It could just be uh, based on the fact that we now have 5G um, and there are threats associated with it. So these are sort of some recommendations to manage the four different time horizons. And um, in closing, I'd like us to, to remember that cyber resilience is not just a, a, a theoretical concept. It's actually a path to a safer digital future. You know, this is the era where some people may be wondering where their children are getting all these pronouns from. Uh, and I hear some countries promote that. You see children saying, oh, call me him, call me they, call me I, call me his. We, we, we need to also be involved in ensuring that we don't allow the cyberspace erode some of our cultural values, right? And as we move forward, let's remember that we have this role to play, both on the home front and on the business front. On that note, uh, I'd like to thank you all for for listening to the few nuggets I have to share, and also on the institute for giving me this platform to to share my views on this um, topic. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you so much, Mr. Sherwood, for the insightful presentation. I can see some hands, clapping of hands going on everywhere. You know, please, if you have any questions, please, could you please drop it on the chat box? We can attend to it.
please. Any questions, please? Uh, apparently, so show as always, we we get accolades against asking questions, yeah. And uh, most of the information on the charts are just contributed. I have something here that somebody wrote. He said, My wife just fought to WhatsApp hack today through link. Uh, uh, ever with the word, the activation of two step authentication. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow. Yeah, please don't click yeah. on links. Don't click on links on WhatsApp, please. Don't click on links on WhatsApp. When you want to click, please try to hover around it eh, to be sure the link is the source. Because click on WhatsApp, pictures on WhatsApp. Yeah, a lot of them are backdoors. Eh? There's no backdoors to steal your information. So on the chat yeah. box, all I see is thank you, thank you, thank you. No questions. Yeah, of course, it's an excellent delivery. Yes. So watch out for part two, huh? All right, so I think there are no questions. Uh, no questions, there's so much value for the presentation, brilliant, brilliant one. Okay, so um, since we have no questions, thank you so much, Mr. Shell, Idris Musa for the intelligent presentation. Uh, we keep learning and unlearning. Continuous improvement and continuous learning is very important. All right, so please, for the certificate of participation, uh, members uh, members will get the certificate of participation. Non-members, you might have to pay a token. Uh, put up the information on the group. You might have to contact the certification at im.africa.org. is on the chat group for non-members to request for your certificate of participation for this course. For those of us that need to submit our CPD for the Institute or any other uh, professional certification, you need to get that. Your cultural professional development um, certificate, you need this to upload to get that. Okay, thank you very much. Um, having said that, I would like to call on to various members of the Governing Council of the Institute to speak briefly. Um, so I will start with Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, please, can you please uh, unmute yourself to give us the brief introduction. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Nago. Um, a very good evening once again, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're indeed uh, grateful to have you all here tonight. Uh, uh, first and foremost, I want to thank uh, Mr. Idris Musa for a wonderful presentation. In fact, I, I, I can't just explain because um, it was so detailed and uh, I believe um, we all will agree and attest to the fact that the session has been so rewarding all day and uh, it's actually worth our time. And um, I want to thank, um, you know, other participants, you know, for um, ensuring that they are here till the end of the presentation. It goes to show how, you know, how important this uh, particular topic is to most people. And like uh, Mr. Nago suggested, probably we might be looking at a part two of this particular presentation in the coming months. Um, I want to thank uh, members of our great institute that are here present, uh, most especially the executive council members, and all those that have in one way or the other contributed you know, to the success of today's event. In fact, the institute continues to evolve in ensuring that um, we have to mitigate uh, the various information risks that uh, people are actually exposed to. Even earlier today, uh, we had our National Digital Transformation and Data Protection Awareness Campaign in one of the private organizations here in Lagos. And uh, tomorrow we're going to be at the Lagos State um, LTV8 uh, 
you know, premises where we're also going to extend the same program to before taking it to uh, the city of Abuja next week. So uh, this is a great opportunity for those that are yet to join the IIM Africa family. We've got the platform, we've got the recognition, we've got the coverage across the globe. And I am has come to stay. Um, we wouldn't want a situation where you know people just come, attend our webinars, and we don't see them any. We want it to be part of this family. We want it to benefit. We want it to be able to, you know, share lessons learned, best practices, and also to network with all with peers and other professionals across the globe. Uh, this is a good opportunity. It's a good platform, uh, you know, for you to exhibit whatever skills that you have, whatever. Uh, product or services that you've got to offer in the ITIM industry. And I also want to use this opportunity to call on members of our great institutes, you know. Um, already we have um, the months taken from uh, November, December, all through January. So from February, we still have um, slots for those that might be interested in, you know, facilitating the uh, monthly webinars. And also the quarterly training program is still there, which I believe is exterior like towards also put out the uh, necessary information. Thank you for your time. I hand over back to uh, the moderator, Mr. Nago. Thank you so much, our able president, uh, Ambassador Dr. Udepo, for that um, remark. Um, okay, moving on. Our able vice president, Princess Tiwalade Pakuga, who is, who is here present? Madam, please can you unmute your mic? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, ma, we can hear you, ma'am. Thank you very much. We can hear you, Ben. Yeah, thank you very much. As I've been introduced. I am Princess Tiwalade Fakunda, the Vice President of our Great Institute. I would like to start by thanking the Almighty God for making this October 2023 free webinar a success. Then secondly, I want to thank the our Great President, Ambassador Dr. Yedokun, for being a great leader for this institute. He has worked tirelessly. He's a great leader, inspirational leader, and as I used to tell him, transformational leader. He has really, really worked hard with the ESCO members and some other members. I want to thank him for a job well done. Then thirdly, I would like to thank the, the presenter of today, Mr. Idris Musa, for this beautiful topic that he presented to us, cyber resilience in a digital frontier. I will, you will all agree with me that this topic was well researched and excellently presented. We have all learned a lot from it and I will say thank you very much sir for your job well done and I also want to thank all the ESCO members present and uh, Mr. Nago for moderating excellently well we say thank you very much and I also thank all participants all participants, especially I can see from the participants, I can see one of my classmates as is a member of the Institute, actually. I can see him there and I cannot see him and say I did not see him. So I would like to also thank Professor Abiola Abioye for participating. Your coming has really added value to this. Uh, webinar for October 2023. I hope you will always find time to attend as well. So once again, I wish all of us all the best and I pray that God will meet us at the, at the, at the very uh, point of our need.
thank you very much and God bless. Thank you so much, um, Mrs. Tuwala, the Able Vice President of the Institute of Information Management of Africa. Thank you so much. Uh, we do not have another member except myself. My humble self, Ambassador Alexander M. Dosianago, a Deputy Council Member of the Institute, uh, which is your Able Moderator. So I say thank you so much for coming and I uh, hope to see you. However, please. The next um, section of this uh, program is group photograph. But before then, we're having our Abuja induction coming up um, in November next month. Please, I would like you to, please, for those of you that are not yet members of the Institute, please, it's best you, you try to become a member. The topic for that event is path. So there is a lot to learn and unlearn. Uh, is okay. It's up on the screen. It's 11th of November is a powerful topic on data data governance strategy for data protection, compliance, and business growth. This is a passion, right? It's a passion topic for me, and I hope uh, to see every one of us online and also physically there. We are going to be having a panel session to to do a deep dive. Please, it's not just an induction; it is also another form of training for us to learn and unlearn. You're also going to have certificate of participation to aid your continued professional development. So please, new members, existing members, you are advised to attend. It's going to be a power park event coming up in Abuja next month, November 11th. Please be there for the annual summit induction and investor ceremony. Very important. Thank you. So um, having said that, I would like us to turn on our cameras for group photograph. You know, we are not here physically, but virtual photograph works, sir. So please turn on your cameras. Please, you can share the screen, please. We need to take group photograph. Thank you so much. Turn on your cameras. Okay, okay, okay. The first page, I have a few people's camera on. Uh, well, it might be for your for your purpose of your personal privacy. You don't want to turn it on, no problem. We understand. But if you are, if you will, please, we will be willing to take your pictures as a, an evidence of participation. Okay. So, I take the first set. Okay. I'm taking the first set of pictures. So, uh, come smile a bit, you know. This is a group picture. Oh, sorry. It is. Please don't go. It's part of your attendance. If I don't capture your camera that you are here, I'm sorry, you might not get your certificate. So I have the first group taken. So I go to the second page. Ah, second page, we have a few persons turning on their cameras. Please turn on your cameras. Second page group. So we have the the page, we have a few persons that turn on their camera as well. For privacy purposes, I understand. The names are showing. Thank you once again for coming to today's webinar. It's a great thing. It's not easy. Take your spare time to learn and unlearn. Okay, as the second page taking. Yeah, so thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your time. Once again, we appreciate your attendance on the, this contact the Institute. And uh, for further information, we are always available to attend to you. We have several courses that can aid your, your personal development within the organizations. Thank you so much, and uh, have a lovely day.
Mr. President, I think you have to call this presentation a close. The webinar, please. Mr. Thank President, you very close. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Tana Go. It's been a wonderful time, and um, I were indeed um, happy to have um, the participants in attendance. We look forward to having you on board again um, in the month of November. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.